Butler. And finally, uh, we have uh, Gina Runga, who is uh, an entrepreneur originally from Kenya, who now lives in Ghana, and runs a company that seeks to enable trade uh, between Africa and the rest of the world, and indeed between one country in Africa and another. So, Thank you very much. It's an honor to be here today. Um, I basically will say I speak for the majority of, uh, of Africans. Most Africans do not have large corporations that uh, they can lobby governments for. Most Africans do not have large corporations through which uh, they can try and consolidate uh, production and achieve um, achieve the benefits you have from, um, from uh, economies of scale. The average person that my company represents is somebody who's doing production in the back of their house. This person can only sell their products to their neighbor and thankfully technology has evolved today because of uh, liberalization of the mobile phone industry and because of the rise of the internet so that this individual can now interface with as many individuals as he wants around the globe. So what our company seeks to do is to present these people to the globe so that if you're sitting in your home, you have a way of communicating to that individual in Africa that you want something they're selling. The only challenge is standing between that person and the extra profit they could make in order to buy healthcare facilities for their children or pay school fees are non-tariff and tariff barriers that would be imposed on the movement of their goods. Um, Mobile phones and the internet are the two things we've combined to enable mediation of such trade. When the goods reach the port and they cannot move efficiently because the government is involved in running the port and therefore the port is inefficient, when the goods reach another port and uh, tariffs are imposed on the products so that they do not become viable or attractive to the buyers to buy, and uh, when uh, corrupt uh, customs officials have to hold on to the goods for a while, etc., you know all the issues that people have with moving products in Africa. When uh, infrastructure is not sound and therefore things cannot be moved quickly, these are the things that will stand between this person's click of a button to sell something to another person who wants it in order to pull himself by his bootstraps and uh, support himself even in these difficult economic times. So my message um, is really to African governments at this point in time when they can no longer run to the West for help, that they should allow the average African to be able to use technology that has, um, has made itself available in order for them to survive this economic downturn. There's a real solution that they have. They have products that they produce. Mostly the world has never seen what Africans produce, but there is a solution on the table. The technology has made itself available, and if our governments can only remove the trade uh, barriers that exist in form of tariff and non-tariff barriers, we have a real chance and a real opportunity for the average African to be able to trade not only with their neighbors around Africa, but with the globe at large. You have all seen the eBay example. People who trade on eBay are not large corporations. They're just individuals who are innovative, they look around them, they, they basically do arbitrage. They sell whatever they have, and a lot of people are making money and are able to survive. So I may not know um, what happens in the G20 halls or uh, the big major policies, but we can see stumbling blocks that exist that African governments can remove for the average individual to be able to, using the eBay type platform, which is the analogy you might understand, in order to trade themselves out of poverty. And so, that, for me, that's what I see for the African uh, landscape at the moment. Thank you. 